The electrochemical records of the zero seed of all things are the zero elements which are known as the inert gases, from which center of the fulcrum zero of polarity all polarizing body forms extend to manifest vitalizing life and return as depolarizing forms to manifest devitalizing death. The inert gases are God's recording and repeating system. They record, remember, and repeat all actions and reactions of all things from eternity unto eternity. They broadcast all of creation to all creation, and likewise receive the broadcasts of all creation for rebroadcasting to all creation. The inert gases are zeros in the universal equilibrium. Polarity divides and extends the one light into electric thought wave cycles which appear from the one still light as moving pairs of moving lights and disappear into that still light for reappearance forever without end. The inert gases are the spiritual elements which born and reborn the physical elements and meticulously make spectrum records of their eternities of rebornings. The inert gases center all elements from within to control their unfolding cycles of polarizing, depolarizing form and balance them from without by two poles of still light to control the refolding of form into their zero seed. The inert gases record purposeful unfoldings and give back to each corpuscle of motion its cell memory of purpose and its instinctive guidance. They likewise give back to awakening consciousness the records of all cycles of soul awakening which have been written in the soul seeds of all unfolding refolding body forms. The inert gases write down in God's book of light all that you and I and anyone has ever been. Likewise what the ant, the elephant, the tiger, violet and bee have ever been, or have ever done since their beginnings, and give them back to them after every rest period which divides their cycles. God's sole occupation is the building of moving body forms to simulate his one idea of cause and effect, which creation is. There is a very definite bridge between God and man. It is invisible in the vacuum of the zero stillness of God's kingdom, but it has a visible link at every point where that bridge touches the shores of the action universe of motion. That is something which every man can understand, for he can hold the symbol of that great reality in his hand in the form of a simple seed. He has never known, however, that in that imperishable seed, within that perishable acorn, which he holds in his hand, is the whole answer to where the oak tree comes from to live and where it goes when it dies. That is something which the physicist can more readily understand when you tell him that the imperishable, invisible seed within that acorn is an inert gas, or a combination of several octaves of inert gases. God thinks in electric pulsations, which are recorded in motion as four pairs of rings, which are compressed into spheres. Each cyclic pulsation is manifested by the projection of four concentric light rings in one plane from one point of magnetic mind light in which the red half of the spectrum is on the outside of the rings and the blue half is on the inside. These four rings are the seed of the octave wave 
and occupy that position in the wave known as the zero group of elements, or inert gases. You will note that an inert gas marked zero begins and ends each octave. The nine inert gases are the shores of the visible universe, where the invisible bridges, which link mind and motion, touch the moving action universe. There are nine of them because the bridge has nine parts, which we might call entrances to mortality and exits to immortality. The wave is created by dividing the four sexless rings of the inert gases into four pairs of oppositely sex-conditioned rings and projecting them toward sex mates of adjoining wave fields to find balance and unity in each other. God's concentrative thinking compresses these mate rings as they are projected. This is the general active uphill flow of energy principle which multiplies power and speed in the inverse ratio of the cube as they are thus centripetally projected until the red and blue pair of cyclonic vortices thus resulting collide at wave amplitudes midway between the two zero cathodes from which they were projected. This is the manner in which unbalanced and separated sexed pairs are united into the oneness of the two balanced and equal hemispheres of spherical incandescent suns. Within the four zero rings of the wave is the cathode mother womb of space, which is seeking the outside to fulfill her office of borning the seed of the father. To aid this process, the four pairs of projecting rings gradually close up their centering holes as the rings are compressed from their cone bases towards their apices, where the collision of sex mating completes the closing in the incandescent sphere thus formed. Likewise, all chemical elements of the octaves are red and blue lights which are projected from the pure white light of their inert gases, which are their octave seed. They return to their invisible oneness by radioactive emanations which are pure white incandescent microscopic suns. Man calls them alpha, beta, gamma, or helium rays as they emanate from tungsten, actinium, radium, or uranium at almost the speed of light. Each of them is the seed for another body of its like kind, as suns are seed for all bodies. There are nine of these inert gases in nature, as you will see by the nine-stringed harp of the universe. The only difference in their structure is that each consecutive inert gas from one to nine is smaller than its predecessor, for each octave is a multiplication of its predecessor. The upper diagram marked AA represents the creation of an octave of tones, beginning with the inert gas of four motionless rings centered by the stillness of universal energy to act as cathodes at both ends. This pair of four rings divide and extend their pairs of four rings toward approaching mates. Electric compression causes the rings to begin to spin, then to become smaller and turn faster as they approach the plane of collision where all four pairs unite to form a sphere. This represents the centripetal half of the journey which charges, polarizes, heats, and multiplies potential. These are the qualities necessary for increasingly vitalized life. Observe carefully what now happens. Centripetal force reaches its maximum and begins to die, and centrifugal force takes over. Look again at the top diagram in figure 42, and carefully note that the four rings of the inert gases are like the four rims of wheels placed within each other, with one common hub. Now note that the four rims become the hub when they are compressed and extended. Observe also that the extensions cause the appearance of cones as centripetal force winds the cone bases into a sun at the apex point of collision. The electric current begins and ends at cathodes. Cathodes are still points in the zero universe from which the energy of desire for creation is expressed. 
Chemically, cathodes are the inert gases of the octaves, which are not elements, for they will not mix with them. They are the seed from which the elements spring and to which they return. From the spectrum standpoint, they are white light from which all colors extend when put under electric strain and to which they return when the strain ceases. From the tonal point of view, they are the keynotes of the octave from which one can never escape knowledge of their presence in every tonal harmony. From the mathematical point of view, they are the zero of the whole octave. From the geometric form point of view, which its basis for motion gives it, the inert gas consists of four rings, one within the other. Each octave of the elements grows from its inert gas, just as a tree grows from its seed. The inert gases record and store for repetition all that has gone before in that octave. In the middle leaf table of the elements, hydrogen is shown without an inert gas. This is as impossible as producing a child without parents. That omnipresent point from which you have issued your body is the same point at which the visible mortal you becomes invisible and again assumes immortality. That one point in all this universe controls your every movement from your first one many millions of years ago to the last one which consummates the idea of man as expressed by you. That one point is your soul of the universal soul. It is your mind of the universal mind as one unit of creation. You are one with that mind. In fact, you are that mind. Your body is the thinking and imagining of that mind. The eternal you is that center, and your eternal body is that series of four rings of fluorescent light, which is eternally wrapped around that centering soul of the eternal you. Those four rings are eternal records of you. They are as immortal as you are immortal. They are the microfilm of you, yourself. <laughs> 